welcome back to Beartooth Hill Bike Park. In this video we will be building the wooden roller coaster which is basically going to be the headline attraction of this whole park and I'm very excited to show you this because I think it's one of the best things that I've done in Planet Coaster overall. I'm very happy with how it turned out, I don't think it could have gone a lot better. But just to start I am finishing off this whole right side of the park. You can see how it is inside this basin and yeah it has been split up into two halves basically so the whole right side is finished now um, I did a lot of work off camera because it was just repetitive to what I'd already been doing so yeah now I'm just making a little picnic area um, I thought it's quite important to have this so you know people can eat their lunch just a nice area to sit down and then I'm also making these bike racks just where people can leave the bikes so they won't actually have to take them into the quite compact uh, bench area but now you will see the wooden coaster for the first time and you can see that it's already gone in there's some work on it that I've already done and I did do this off camera because I was like playing with ideas trying to get stuff to work so the first drop took me hours to make um, I was trying to profile it the right way so that it wasn't too steep but it wasn't too shallow I took massive inspiration from Boulder Dash at um, Lake Compounds in the USA so that was my inspiration for the drop I was oh, it's almost identical to the drop um, but I had to line that up with the station so that it can then do a station fly through so that took me so long to do and I didn't put it in this video because you know it's very slow progress and it won't be entertaining to watch but yeah I am making this big turnaround section now and here you can see I'm making a little tunnel and there are four parallel bits of track you may be thinking that this is a dueling coaster but it's not um, but because I want this to be compact so that there's more room for bike trails I've had to put it very close together so the tracks are parallel to each other for a lot of it and yeah this bridge is just so that a bike trail can then go above it um, but I think the big turnaround section looks really nice soon you will see how the other bit comes underneath it and it all fits together really well so it's got a really nice aesthetic to it which I'm very happy with and of course here there is a maintenance shed I did do this mostly off camera um, so yeah there's a transfer track um, I'm trying to make this very realistic as I have done with other parts of this park as well but yeah now we continue with the layout I added to this gradually because I didn't want to have it all in one go because if I'm doing it all in one go then it takes a while um, well it will take a while anyway but I'll get bored of it um, so I'll lose a bit of inspiration so I'll try and build a bit then move on to something else and I usually smooth it as I go rather than completing the whole layout and smoothing it um, but yeah we are making another turn around so that it can come back and this turn is actually very tight but I think it's going at a fair speed so it won't be unrealistic g-forces but you can see there that there's a double up and then a dive into the side of the station so it will have lots of station fly throughs and for the name I'm thinking something related with bears because it is Bear Tooth Hill Bike Park um, obviously something like the Great Bear would be good but that's an inverted coaster at Hershey Park um, but yeah I'm thinking maybe Grizzly or Growler something like that I think Growler would work quite well because it could personify the noise of the roller coaster as it comes uh, screaming through the station um, and also is related to bears but if you've got any other good suggestions for a name for this coaster then leave it in the comments um, but yeah again we're just continuing this layout I think it's really nice how the transfer track goes underneath all of these supports it's quite hidden but you will see it from the brake run and it just shows that the detail that I'm going for so this wooden coaster overall I'm not really sure what manufacturer it would be by I don't think it's going to be a GCI or a renowned manufacturer because that would be more expensive. It probably would be a small manufacturer, maybe CCI um, because they make some coasters of this type that are very different to each other. They don't really have a hugely consistent style so I think that's why I could go with them. Um, but it doesn't really matter anyway, I don't need to write this is a CCI roller coaster. Um, but yeah of course it will have those PTC trains and a lot of classic wooden coasters in America especially have PTC trains 
so yeah um but you can see the final turnaround into the brakes and this layout is more or less complete now just doing the last bits of smoothing um, but i'm very happy with how the layout is you can see now this concrete going in so it feels like it's all built into a pit and i'm very happy with how that looks because it won't be an eyesore because it's into the ground so obviously the main purpose of this park is for bike trails and some cyclists may not want to be distracted by a huge wooden roller coaster so it will be slightly hidden into the ground of course the drop and lift hill do stand out a bit but to be honest the lift hill is very close to the ground as well as it's going up a hill just like boulder dash at lake compounds that was my main inspiration for this whole coaster but then when I went to the rest of the layout, I sort of took my own flair on it. I didn't copy it any further. But yeah, it will be even more covered when I put all the trees around because it is a very forested area. So I think it'll look really nice when it's combined into the whole park. But here is some wooden planks in the middle of the track and um, nobody really knows what these are for. I have an idea of what they are used for, but I'm not certain about this, but you do see these on a lot of wooden roller coasters and it just adds that detail, makes them look more complete, to be honest. Um, but what I think they are for is so that maintenance workers can cross over the track. I read somewhere that if there's a gap bigger than 12 inches, then they've got to wear a harness. So I think they use these pieces so that they can step across safely um, and the gap is then shortened to less than 12 inches so that they don't have to have a harness because that would just be more of a hassle for the park um, but yeah I do go and do this for a lot of the layout I don't film all of it because you can see the main idea of it um, it took me about an hour to do the whole layout I don't have to do all of the layout because um, I'm only doing it where there's a catwalk on either side where the um, coaster's banked so much that there's not able to be a catwalk on either side. There's no point because they can't really cross over it anyway. Um, but shortly you will see me um, skip ahead and we will begin on to the custom supports. And yeah, I have done a lot of custom supporting on this. This video is mainly just getting all the track work done. I don't really go into much detail with all the buildings, but I get the coaster so that it looks very good. And well, yeah, the POV looks nice, but it'll look even nicer with the trees around it. But now you can see how I'm extending this bridge. I'm using these concrete supports. These are actually the footers for roller coaster supports if you want to do custom supports. Um, so yeah, I think the concrete does have quite a good texture if you use it from the custom supports thing. So yeah, I used it there. And then of course there's these fences to stop cyclists from dropping any items across the bridge. Um, so yeah, um, you can see there that the bike trail is coming together, but the custom supports are starting now. And I don't do this for lots of the layout because a lot of it is straight track. And if it's going, you know, a gradual speed on straight track, you don't really need to put supports either side of it because there's not going to be too many G-forces exerted laterally onto the support structure. But it's important to have it when there are sharp turns. Um, you just don't really see these turns without supports, um, without uh, lateral supports because you know it would just put too much stress on it and they would have to tighten up the bolts a lot more frequently pretty much um, but yeah I do this for the whole of the first drop because it is gradually bending to the right at a pretty high speed so it does need to be supported quite well um, but it will look very nice from the car park you can see this uh, drop from the car park up on the hill and it's a really good um, focal point so I'm happy with how it looks afterwards but yeah I'm just doing some cross beams now this took a while but I think it's very rewarding it looks very good when you've put the effort in to do these custom supports um, and I think yeah soon we put the cross beams in and these are what make it look finished um, because obviously they got to be joined up somehow to add to that support structure but yeah um, for the next minute or so you are just going to see me building lots of custom support so I'll move on to something else. 
Of course, this series is a bike park, and I have been doing some cycling myself, so I think I'll just tell you about that. Not really much mountain biking, because all of the mountain bike centres, all of the bike parks are shut, so uh, mountain biking is not as easy to do, because um, all of the best trails are at commercially owned places. You can't really just go out into the wild and find some good trails. It's not that easy to find them. So I have been doing mostly road cycling and I've been doing this for about a month. I decided to leave the house during quarantine and use cycling as my daily exercise. And quite recently, about a week ago, I cycled to Flamingo Land and I saw the big new Intamin roller coaster there and that looked really impressive. So I was very happy with that achievement. I cycled 133 kilometers in total that day and I did that after building myself up from lots of other rides. You can see a video which goes into much more detail about what I did. You can see some action camera shots from my journey and you will of course see some footage of the actual Intamin roller coaster which will soon open at my home park Flamingo Land. So if that sounds interesting then it should be a fairly recent video on my channel. But yeah we're still doing these cross beams but you can see how it's starting to look really good and I'm very happy with how it is. Um, you won't be able to see these custom supports as much from the on-ride POV since it's slightly out of view but from off-ride shots with the ride coming down and it looks really good and now you can just see me putting in all of these footers. This does take a while but um, yeah it's the finishing touch. It doesn't look right if you don't put the footers in because obviously the wood's got to be somewhere so it's um Normally it would be bolted into these bits of concrete, but that's just a bit of extra detail and pieces that I'm not willing to go into because it's just, it's going to add so much more pieces and I don't really expect people to be zooming in really to look at these custom supports. And now we are on to something completely different. This doesn't involve the coaster at all. Well, actually it does in a way, but this is netting and you're probably a bit confused at what this ugly thing is that I'm doing. Some of you may already have an idea, but I doubt it. And it does look quite messy. The pieces aren't really combined together very well. But uh, with this being a very steep cliff with lots of rocks coming out of it, I thought that it would be appropriate to put some rock fall protection armor onto the cliff. And that's what this is. Towards the end, hopefully you will see what it is and it'll look familiar. Um, but yeah, there are some buildings beneath this, so I thought it would be important to protect uh, the buildings from rock falls. Um, underneath the cable car, I did build some avalanche barriers because in the winter, um, an open bit of, um, well, without forest, because trees act as avalanche barriers on their own. But there weren't any trees underneath the cable car, it was a clearing, so snow could easily build up there and eventually come flying down and cause some real damage to the buildings below. So I put some avalanche barriers in there for protection and now I'm putting some rockfall protection in here. You can see how these um, supports are used to screw into the cliff face and then they will keep the nets in place and I think it looks pretty similar to what I was looking for in the end. Some of you may uh, understand what it is now. But I thought it was very important also to have this underneath where the wooden support structure is for the coaster because if there was a landslide, a rock fall, then you know the coaster could lose lots of land underneath it which could also cause that to collapse. Um, so yeah, it's never going to be good. And I think it looks quite good in the end. I think it will look better with this building underneath. You saw me building some foundations for something there. I decided that I'm going to build a, just an average shop and um, probably give you some pieces for your bike so that you can maybe get a pump or something um, to maintain your own bike, just yeah, general items there. Um, but we are approaching the end of this video now and it has been a long one because I've done so much on this. Um, I've cut out a lot of it as well, so it was a lot longer originally. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.